episode of Journey of a Christian Writer. My name is M.L. Bull. I'm a Christian and women's fiction author. And in this episode, I'm going to be going over the three main parts of every story. Now, if you're a writer, you're probably already familiar with what these parts are, which are the beginning, middle, and ending. But in this video, I'm going to be going into detail of what I believe should be within each part of a story. So I have some cards here with a couple notes on them um, just so I don't forget to mention the different tasks within each uh, part of a story. The first part is obviously the beginning and in this part, there are five different things that I believe should be within the beginning. And these include introducing characters, building settings, identifying your character's stasis, stating your character's goals, and acknowledging story problems. So, characters are like the beating hearts of stories that make them come alive. Um, as I mentioned in my previous video of uh, the six essential elements of story writing. When it comes to introducing characters, you can do this in various different ways, such as mentioning names, um, describing physical attributes, personalities, and um, other different identity descriptions of your characters. For building settings, it's important, I think, to mention the main setting uh, within a story first, and then branching it out and talking about the sub-locations within that main setting. For example, maybe your main setting is a town, or a city, or a particular state, or maybe it's some type of fantasy world, if you're a fantasy writer. Once you mention that main setting, then you can branch it out and talk about the sub-locations um, within that main setting, such as main locales, uh, streets, um, avenues, or islands, or countries within that main setting. It's kind of like painting a canvas and adding a little bit at a time. Um, this type of way of building your settings. Instead of trying to um, shove a whole lot of setting description down your reader's throats all at once. Um, the next thing is identifying your character's stasis. If you're not familiar with this term, stasis is pretty much the beginning state of your characters before they are collided with different obstacles and complications in the story. Um, I made a character arc diagram that you can um, see right over here and that is a diagram that I made for myself and my characters in order to show their character arc throughout the story. Um, and the stasis is the beginning and first phase that I have for my character arcs in my stories. Um, it's pretty much just the equilibrium that is uh, the equilibrium where the character begins at or starts at in the beginning of a story. The next thing is stating character goals. Character goals is pretty much what the characters want to accomplish over the course of the story. This could be various different things. Um, maybe the character wants to get a promotion, for example, uh, or 
um, they are trying to recover from a physical condition such as my character Andre and my debut novel Eva's Promise who had suffered a brain injury. Um, but the goals, it could be various different things, but you want to make sure that you mention the goal early on in the beginning of the story. The next and final thing for the beginning is acknowledging story problems. Um, you want to uh, mention what it is that the character's problem is and a way to find out what this is is by um, using all the different details of the character's backgrounds um, such as the character's uh, goals, their wants, needs, their weaknesses, wounds, and fears. A good way to calculate all of this is by using a formula that I just made up, um, which is goals plus wants plus needs plus weaknesses minus wounds plus fears equals your story problems. If you're wondering why I said minus wounds, is because these wounds are usually past uh, past history within the backstory of your characters. They're emotional wounds that the characters um, don't really want to be faced with and um, it's pretty much because of what fears that they have that hinder them from being able to face up to these emotional wounds. Um, but that is what typically happens uh, with characters is them having emotional wounds and um, because of these wounds and their fears that's what hinders them um, from being able to accomplish their goals. It causes internal conflict for the characters that um, hinders them from being able to accomplish their goals as well as of course the external conflict but these are all of the different tasks that I believe should be within the beginning part of a story. Now let's go on to part two, the middle. The middle has three specific tasks that really help with being able to complete it and these include setting off a trigger increasing obstacles and complications, and identifying the climax of the story. Now when it comes to setting off a trigger, one thing to keep in mind is that this particular event, it usually happens in the beginning or the end of the beginning, but it's also what helps to set off all the rest of the conflict in the story. Once you have a trigger in the story, then you can increase the obstacles and the complications that collide with the characters um, along the course of the story. And these can be various different things. For example, a character trying to get to a destination and running into a hurricane um, or some type of storm. Once you have things going with the conflict in the story and have the complications and things um, piling up pretty much on the characters. At some point you will reach the highest point of tension in the story which is the climax. Um, and one way to help you to identify this climax is to decide on what it is that the characters uh, come to terms with or what revelations that they that they um, learn or be able to figure out along the journey to help them to reach this particular breaking point in the story. Um, something that may be confusing to some beginner writers is how some 
think that the climax is the end of the story, but according to uh, Nigel Watts in Write a Novel and Get It Published, uh, he states how the climax is not the fulfillment of the narrative journey, which pretty much just says that there are other things to come after the con after the um, climax of the story. So that's just something to keep in mind. But these are all of the different things that should pretty much be in the middle of every story. Finally, let's go on to part three, the ending. The ending should include the following tasks, which are creating your character's new stasis, shifting the story to a reversal, and concluding with the resolution. When characters go through different things, different obstacles and complications in the story, it allows them to build up and um, transform themselves in different ways. So the new stasis is pretty much just a renewed state that the character is in by the end of the story or toward the end of the story. Um, so they may discover different things about themselves such as um, discovering hidden abilities or um, hidden talents or things. Um, maybe they are facing up to harsh truths or um, dark secrets or repressed memories from their past are some examples of different things that characters learn to cope with and um, to accept when they reach this renewed state. It allows them to see a new, res new perspective and a new outlook on life as well as their situations. Once the character is in this state, it will motivate them to take a change, make a change of direction in the story, which ultimately is what leads them into the reversal um, of the story. Shifting the story to a reversal is pretty much just the consequence or outcome of all the conflict that led up to it. Um, if you're not familiar with this term, that's pretty much what the reversal is. is like um, It's like a turnabout type of uh, event that takes place in the story. And finally, after this takes place, you can um, move to the last task which is concluding with the resolution. And this part is pretty self-explanatory, which is just the character um, closing out the story and um, pretty much the end of the book or story or whatever it is that you're writing. Um, but that is pretty much all of the different tasks for each part of a story. The beginning, middle, and ending uh, are what make our stories whole and complete. And without these main parts, it would be impossible for us to show the overall journey of our characters as well as the story arcs in our books. So whenever you're writing a short story, a novel, a play, whatever it is, remember to add these three main parts within your story. Um, that's all I have for this video and thank you for watching. For more detailed information on the subject of this video and other writing tips, tricks, and out-of-the-box ideas, you can visit my Eartha website and check out my writing blog, The Brainstorm under the writing blog button of my menu navigation. Just go to mlbullbooks.com and you'll see it there. I hope you enjoyed this latest video and thank you